Welcome back, everyone, to Sun and Fun 2008. I have the honor today to present a couple that have been dedicated to aviation safety, and in particular to the role of the flight instructor for many years. In, 2000, in 1967, they began the National Flight Instructors Association, NAFI, and with 100 members. Today, they are 5,500 members strong. This association has been dedicated to supporting and promoting professionalism in flight instruction, a profession that needs mentoring and that is a key profession in our aviation world. Joanne and Sandy Hill also administer the Master Flight Instructor Awards, which is another follow-on to aviation safety and promoting the best in instruction. They also, along with their other duties, administrate something that's very important to all of us in GA, and that is the General Aviation Awards Program. It honors the finest in general aviation. These dedicated people have spent many years and continue to do so to make our aviation world better. Please welcome Joanne and Sandy Hill. <laughs> Okay. Hold the mic down. Good idea. Yeah. Well, good morning. Or, no, it's <coughs> afternoon. It's afternoon. Yes. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for taking some time out of your busy schedule while you're here at Sun and Fun to join us for uh, an hour of uh, our thoughts as they relate to flight instructor professionalism. As Kathleen said, um, we are Sandy and Joanne Hill, sometimes referred to <laughs> as the headmasters. We'll get into the reason for that uh, in a few minutes. So, I'm Joanne Hill, serving as Vice President of NAVI. And I'm Sandy Hill, and I also serve as Vice President for NAVI. NAVI is an equal <coughs> opportunity employer. Um, we really would like to, to spend the bulk of our time talking about our thoughts, our perceptions, as they relate to flight instructor professionalism. So with that in mind, we're just going to cover um, some of the things that we think a professional flight instructor should be, should do, etc. Okay, the professional CFI, this is uh, the, the age-old model of a professional CFI. A good teacher and communicator, that's a given. Also must be a proficient pilot, that's a given also. You do realize that uh, once you earn that CFI certificate, that's really not a pilot certificate, that's a teaching certificate. And always remember that uh, education and, and teaching and instructing is, uh, is what the CFI is about. You need to be also a safety advocate for your students, an ethical service provider, and a continuous learner, especially in the 21st century. You cannot stop learning. You have to keep on learning yourself. And we expect you to be a mentor and a role model, a mentor to other CFIs, new or younger CFIs. And you're always a role model. When you're out at the airport, everyone is watching you. You're the role model. If you do it, it must be OK. Right, yeah, I would like to, <coughs> to parrot Kathleen's words when she was introducing us. She, she was talking about mentors and mentoring and mentorism. That's really what flight instruction is all about, is being a mentor for other pilots. Um, what we would like to do now is build on that very basic uh, description of a professional CFI. And let's talk about some of the issues that CFIs have to deal with today in the 21st century. Of, obviously, you're going to have choices, lots and lots of choices. A few of them are where to instruct, who to instruct, what to instruct, and what equipment to use. I mean, think about those choices that, that you as a CFI will need to make. The field has become so specialized nowadays. Back when we started out in aviation decades ago, a CFI was a CFI was a CFI. You all did pretty much the same thing. You taught people how to fly. You took them towards certificates or ratings. You did an occasional flight review after that was introduced. Uh, but that was really the extent of your work. Think of how different it is today. It's just incredibly different today. Let's look at where you, your choices about where to instruct. 
Okay, there are ab initio programs where you take someone from zero time to airlines. <laughs> Right. Amazing. Uh, university and college programs, lots of those around. More every day. You could be teaching in a private flight school or with an FBO at the airport. Or there are industry training programs such as Cirrus, Cessna, etc. Uh, and you could be an independent contractor. Yeah, there's still an awful lot of independents uh, out there. Uh, back when I got started, we used to make jokes about flight instructors teaching out of the trunk of their car. And, and there is still some of that going on. Um, unfortunately, a lot of airports frown on that anymore. All right, let's talk about who to instruct. We can, we can instruct people who are really in it only for the thrill of flight. They have no intention to use the aircraft. It is not a tool for them to make business trips or anything like that. They're just doing it because it's fun to do. There are business pilots, people who use their airplanes. Um, a friend of ours has a, a, a VTAIL Bonanza, and he uses that airplane weekly to go off all over the United States on business meetings, business trips, and that sort of thing. So we're going to have those kinds of folks we need to deal with. And that takes a different kind of training and a different level of training than just the recreational pilot. And then we also have the aspiring professional pilots. All of those um, young folks, male and female, who are really looking for a ticket to the right seat on a commuter airline. That's, that's their goal in life, but we still need to be training them as well. All right, so here's some more choices. What to instruct? Yeah, my machine is <laughs> sticking. Okay, you can do the primary training, just like in the old days when we were talking about a CFI as a CFI is a CFI. You just teach people how to fly. You start day one until they get their private certificate. You could also specialize in advanced certificates and ratings. Maybe you're tired of bouncing around in the 152 and you want to say, oh, I've had enough of this. I'd like to specialize and just do instrument training. Also, uh, you could be teaching people uh, about the new aircraft that are coming out, the LSAs and the VLJs and the TAAs. Uh, and the new avionics that are out there. People come to instructors to learn all the new stuff. Or you could be someone who specializes in flight reviews and IPCs. Lots of people, everybody needs those, and some people just like to do nothing else but proficiency training and flight reviews. Or you could be someone who spends a lot of time with insurance uh, checkouts and uh, the guidelines that the insurance industry puts on us for training. And the remedial training and recurrent training, all of those are ongoing and good things. Uh, we have groups like the uh, BPPPP, Bonanza Pilot Proficiency Program, that holds weekend proficiency training uh, for Bonanza owners. All of those are opportunities for instructors. Or you could be someone who just likes to do ground schools, or maybe in conjunction with high schools, colleges, tech schools. Let me embellish a little bit. Um while we're here, I'm going to digress a little. It'll become important later on. Um, you look at the, at the first two bullet points up there, primary training and then advanced, and, uh, advanced certificates and ratings. Um, everybody in here heard of gold seal? You know what a gold seal flight instructor is? OK, all right. Well, then you probably know that there are really only two ways, or until recently, only two ways a, an individual could get a Gold Seal Flight Instructor Certificate. As a CFI, you had to fly with a certain number of people over a certain period of time and have a certain pass rate. And if you did that and you had either an advanced ground instructor rating or an instrument ground instructor rating, either one, then you could get a Gold Seal. The other option was and remains if you're a designated pilot examiner. Do a certain number of flight checks over a certain period of time and you got the, either the advanced or the instrument ground instructor rating, that'll get you a gold seal. Um, all of the other things that people are now doing, you know, specializing in, in TAA or specializing in flight reviews, IPCs, proficiency training, ground schools, remedial training, if, they, if that's all they do, and there are a great many out there, that is all they do, do they ever qualify for a gold seal? 
Yes? No? No. No. <laughs> no. They don't. Uh, and the reason is because you have to be involved in signing people off for certificates or ratings. And if you're signing people off for certificates or ratings, that'll get you gold seal. <clears throat> okay, I digressed too much. What equipment to use? The, it runs the whole gamut. LSAs, light sport aircraft, all the way up to very light jets. Some people, believe it or not, are actually taking their primary training, if you want to call it that, in a very <laughs> light jet. I, I, you know, I can't fathom that. I just can't imagine that. But people are out there doing it. Um, At least they're trying to uh, do they're it. They're trying to do it. Yeah, much better descriptor. <laughs> right. Um, if you have an opportunity and have not yet <coughs> taken the time to learn a little bit about light sport aircraft, go up here to the LSA Mall, they call it. They've got a dozen or more beautiful little airplanes. I'm sure that uh, many of them won't be around in five years, but wonderful mm. little airplanes. And boy, that's a, that sure looks like a neat way to go uh, for people who want to just get started in aviation. Home builds, experimentals, that's, that's always an option too for many people. Uh, you could get a glass cockpit, even in these LSAs you can get a glass cockpit. Look at the price tags if you go up there uh, on those airplanes. $100,000, $120,000 for this little bitty airplane with a glass panel. You know, it's got the same glass panel that 747 that United Airlines flies. Same panel. It's just unbelievable. Um, and, you know, believe it or not, you can still today buy an aircraft with the steam gauges, the dials. You can still buy it. But guess what? It's an option, and it costs more. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? And, and, and who'd have thunk 10 years ago? Who'd have thunk? That, that's amazing. Um, take advantage of resources that are available to you as a flight instructor. And, well, not only should you be using the books, the CDs, the DVDs, and online courses that are available, but recommending this to your students and directing them to, to the appropriate websites and that sort of thing. Don't hesitate to use simulators. If you have one available, use them. Uh, uh, there are some incredible state-of-the-art simulators out there, and the price on those keeps coming down, too, which is, which is an interesting concept. Okay, keep on going. Okay, as uh, this is the expanded profile. Now in the 21st century, we're going to add to that first list of qualities that a professional CFI should have. So you need to be a resource on current issues. Lordy, lordy, there's a, so much going on in general aviation and even the rest of the world of aviation that we need to be aware of. So there's lots of ways to do that. You can get AvWeb and all those electronic newsletters. You need to be an advocate for general aviation. We need to save the airport. We need to be sure that big tower doesn't get built. We need to uh, just be sure that uh, pilot rights are protected and you know user fees, things like that. You need to be- let, let me interject there. I read just yesterday, and maybe some of you saw it, I think it was in the GA News, uh, an airport in West Virginia is, now listen carefully, they are closing a runway to build more hangars. Hmm. Think about that. <laughs> They're closing the, the, the crosswind runway. They're going to tear out the crosswind runway so they can build more hangars. A lot of thought went into that. Okay, you need to be proficient with the new aviation technology that's coming out. If you don't know, at least know where to find out an answer. You should be using the newest methods and materials. Things like fits and scenario-based training, all those new uh, concepts and ideas that are being thrown out. You need to get step up and learn what they're all about. You need to possess savvy marketing skills. You need to sell yourself these days. People uh, won't know you're there unless you do some kind of advertising, websites, uh, business cards, all kinds of ways to do that. And you need to be, of course, computer literate. There's no way you can do uh, stay up with aviation activities if you're not computer literate. The FAA uh, safety.gov website, uh, the FASTEAM program is all on the web. Uh, if you want to, uh, well, 
I guess it's not mandated everywhere yet, but it's probably going to be, but IACRA, when you're filling out the old 8710, it uh, is going to be someday just uh, over the web. It just, you fill it out and it goes right to Oklahoma City. Yeah. Let me, uh, let me throw out uh, something with regard to marketing skills. Many of you have probably heard the name Greg Brown. <coughs> Greg Brown was the 2000, I think? I think so. The 2000 National CFI of the Year. Greg is a noted aviation author. He lives out in Arizona um, and, and, you know, quite a guy and, and a very good flight instructor, I might add. Several years ago, Greg published a book called The Savvy Flight Instructor. I highly recommend that to everybody. And here's why. If you were to get the Savvy Flight Instructor, open it up and start paging through it, you wouldn't find any information in there about how to do Shondells or how to teach turns about a point or anything like that. What you would find is how to market yourself. That whole book teaches marketing, marketing skills, marketing yourself as a flight instructor, making a living as a flight instructor. So the savvy flight instructor, Greg Brown, it is available through ASA, I think, isn't mm -hmm. it? Yeah. Okay. All right, a resource on current issues. You need to be a resource, resource on current issues because, uh, well, let, let me try it this way. Have you ever read, any of you, ever read a story in a newspaper that was aviation related, that was written by a reporter who knew nothing about aviation? <laughs> you, you, you've seen that? Yes, yes. Right, I will never forget, and this is the God's honest truth. There was a story 15 years ago I read, it was just a little two paragraph thing, about the twin engine Cessna 150 that went down and all six souls aboard perished. <laughs> okay, we need to be a resource for those people. I have contacted my local newspapers out in the, in the Denver area, uh, on numerous occasions saying, you know, if you want me to read through something that you've written just for accuracy, I'd be glad to do that. It would be far better than making statements like that. Um, know the FARs. They change. They change constantly. We need to keep up with them because people are going to come to us to ask for an interpretation, rightly or wrongly. You need to know about new aircraft and new equipment particularly if your flight school or your airport gets something new, get out there, get familiar with it, get checked out in it, so then you can start teaching in it. Because that's probably the one that folks are going to want to learn to fly. Know where to get an answer. We all know these sage old guys hanging around the airport who seem to know just about everything there is to know about aviation. Make their acquaintance. Pick their brains. Get to know them and, and feel comfortable that you can use them as a resource when you're asked a question that you don't know the answer to. All right, what does it mean to be an advocate for general aviation? Be part of groups that are protecting pilot rights. And there's lots of alphabet groups out there, AOPA, EAA, even a group like NAPI. Uh, be part of those groups because they're the ones who have the, the numbers, the mass, the louder voice when it comes time to uh, have a voice in Washington, D.C. to try to affect a change, either well, even on a local level, be part of a, a local pilots group. And that's, you know, protecting airport rights, that you'll have the Airport uh, Pilots Association of some sort is trying to uh, make things better. Be a media resource, like Sandy was saying, for accurate information. Uh, be a resource also for local government officials to help them make informed decisions. Right. If they want to build a new uh, cell phone tower at the end of the runway and all they can think of is this is the best place to put it uh, because they're not pilots, uh, they need to be taught. They need to be instructed why that's not a good idea, <laughs> that there certainly is a better place. Be proficient with technology. Um, it's a battle that we fight from time to time in our, our roles in NAFI and in the General Aviation Awards Program we hear from people who know nothing about computers, are reluctant uh, or even flatly refuse to get involved with computers on any level. 
we need to be proficient with technology so that we can help at least our flying clients through those hurdles so that they can use that as a tool, as a resource, to get additional information to make them a, a safer and better pilot. Um, participate in industry training. That's kind of what this is right here. What we do here at Sun and Fun, and, and to the same uh, extent up in Oshkosh, lots and lots of forums are available, ranging from things like this to safety seminars and so forth. Take advantage of those opportunities as they come along. Be familiar with new equipment before you instruct in it. That might sound like a silly thing to say, but can you imagine flight instructors doing that? I can. <laughs> Right, it's, it's called on-the-job training. <laughs> you know, you get in the airplane, get the POH out for this new gizmo that you got in your airplane, and you teach somebody as you learn it. Uh, there are probably better ways. Have additional resources for questions that you can't answer. We've already adequately addressed that. <clears throat> okay, use the newest methods and materials. Always use a training syllabus. And this is a good uh, liability insurance policy if you use a syllabus yeah. because then you document uh, what you've done in each lesson and then you can always go back and say, yep, I trained that person and when he's in trouble and he says, well, I never learned that, nope, you used the syllabus and there it was in lesson 13 that, yep. you know, you learned crosswind landings or whatever it, it might be. Learn about FITS. This is the FAA industry training standards. Uh, it's the, the wave of the future. It's scenario-based training. It's um, learner-centered uh, evaluation where the student is more actively involved in evaluating his own performance. Know the vocabulary like scenario-based training. And what does that mean as opposed to maneuvers-based training? We've probably, all of us here, learned uh, maneuvers-based training when we took our uh, pilot instruction. We went out and we, you know, did turns around a point or lazy eights or whatever we did. But in a scenario based training, what you do with a lesson is built utilizing all the skills that the instructor wants to teach you in a real life situation. So maybe you have a flight where uh, you have a purpose in mind and then things start changing or going wrong and you have to. Uh, to decide what to do or how to use this maneuver to get out of the situation you're in or it's just a real life situation that helps with decision making. Yeah, I, I remember my primary flight instructor. When I would show up at the airport, he, I'd say, you know, what are we going to do today? Uh, well, we're going to go out and we're going to do turns about a point. So you'd go out and you'd spend an hour doing turns around a point, and you'd come back to the airport and land and go home and come back the next week, and then you'd do pylon eights or S turns on a road or something like that very different from this scenario based approach. Right, maybe you might have a scenario like how to get into sun and fun and maybe you need to do S turns yeah. across the road because you're not cleared to land and there's a lot of people and you gotta slow down. Yeah. You know, it would be a perfect way to teach that maneuver. What's a mentor pilot? Anybody ever heard the expression mentor pilot? It's, it's, it's kind of an official thing now. Is it a CFI? Yeah. Anybody guess? <laughs> not necessarily, Very good. right? Not ne in fact, more often than not, it isn't. <laughs> it's it's yes. being used in uh, VLJ, very light jet training, where you have you take your basic training and then you have someone else who flies additional hours with you as a mentor pilot, who's not signing you off with hours of instruction, but meeting the needs of insurance primarily, yeah. that you have enough experience to eventually fly on your own. Consider using simulators to reduce the cost of learning to fly. Excellent thing with the, now that the cost of fuel is skyrocketing. Yeah. Customize homework using books and online courses for your clients, depending on which ways they learn better. If they're not computer savvy, you're not going to want them to use a, an online course. Okay, we've already addressed the FAA industry training standards FITS. Where can FITS information be found? <laughs> okay, FAA Aviation News, which is back there on the table. Right, you can get copies of that right back there on that table. It's the, uh, the FAA's, it's bi-monthly, right? Right. Yeah, bi-monthly magazine. And um, uh, I suggest that everybody take a look at that from time to time. That magazine itself is evolving and in becoming a, a much better magazine and a far more useful tool. 
FAAsafety.gov and FAA.gov are both sources of information for FITs. How about savvy marketing skills? Okay, identity apparel, hat, shirts, jackets, pins. When you out, are out on the golf course or out in public and you're wearing a shirt that has an airplane or wings on it, people are gonna notice and say, oh, you must be a pilot. I have always wanted to learn to fly. Yeah. And then you start a conversation and you might uh, gather up some business for either your flight school or yourself. Right. Using uh, business cards and stationery is a good thing to do, uh, depending on where your situation. But you know, if, you, if it's an FBO, they might let an independent put their, their little business cards out there on the counter or just have flyers on the bulletin board. Use the media outlets, newspapers, radio, TV, whenever possible. We, we had a master instructor who lived up in uh, Minnesota who every time he got a new student to solo and every time he had a student pass a flight check, he had a little canned three paragraph article and this was back at the time when Polaroid cameras were still available. Mm -hmm. He'd take a Polaroid picture of the student He'd fill in the appropriate blanks in his canned three-paragraph article and send it to the local daily fish wrapper. They loved it. They loved it. They're always looking for filler. They might not have run it that day, but they would sure run it. And that's a great way of marketing yourself and letting others in the community know that oh, there is a flight school here and I'm available to teach you how to fly. Always uh, things like newsletters and email opportunities to, um, you know, if you have a list of your past students who you flew with for the private certificate, keep them on your email list and send them little notices of little newsy items or reminders of flight reviews coming up. Maybe they uh, might like, get, why get an instrument rating or why this is a good time to do that. Uh, send, use email to send them reminders and encouragement to continue their flight training. You can always build your own website, which is easier and easier these days, or get someone right. to help you. Um, especially younger folks <laughs> really like the web, so you know they're browsing along. They'll find you, find your website, get lots of information about learning to fly and about you as an instructor, and be part of an, a professional association like NAFI, which is the only professional association uh, for flight instructors. Take advantage of the resources that are available through professional associations, uh, and you'll, you'll find a, a wealth of resources there that will not only make you a better flight instructor, but also help you to, uh, to market yourself, and, and that's a very important tool. Be computer literate. Um, use email with your clients. Now, some of them who are less than computer savvy may struggle with that. But that's one way to get them, uh, at least get them a little dual instruction on how the computer works. Communicate with them via email, you know, for scheduling and things like that. Um, take and recommend, take yourself and recommend to your students online courses. AOPA has dozens of really very nicely done courses. The Air Safety Foundation has, uh, has a wealth of stuff like that that is there for you and your students as well. Take advantage of it. Be familiar with FAA.gov and FAAsafety.gov. Both websites, particularly the FAAsafety.gov, um, has, has a lot of resources as it relates to learning, online learning and, and, and that sort of thing. Take advantage of it. Have a library of websites that you can share with your students. You know, just print out a sheet with various web addresses for things that will help your student become a more proficient pilot and use and recommend CDs and DVDs as study material. Uh, some people are comfortable with that, some are not, but that, will, that continues to change and evolve and it'll probably get to the point in our lifetimes, I think, when that becomes the norm, it is not quite there yet. Um, I do need to share one bit of information with you. A, a gentleman who actually lives here in Florida has been fighting the computer battle for years. And I mean, he has dug his heels in. I'm not going to touch one of those things. I want nothing to do with it. It isn't going to help me a bit. Why in the world should I spend time and money learning how to use this thing? 
It just isn't going to make any difference in my life. And besides which, I got a fax machine. I don't need a computer. <laughs> okay. There are people out there like that. There are. And they want to learn to fly. So we're going to have to deal with them. Okay. <clears throat> new FAST team and new wings program. Right. Um, if you've been hanging around this building any length of time <laughs> this week, you surely have heard of the FAST team, FAA Safety Team. That's the new acronym. Uh, where can you find information about that? FAAsafety.gov. And you do need to register. If you have not registered on FAAsafety.gov, then you're missing out on a lot of information. There are about, about 480,000 airmen, and that's the correct term, airmen, not necessarily pilots and mechanics and, and so forth, but 480,000 airmen who are now registered on FAAsafety.gov out of about 900,000. So we're about halfway there. And then the SPANS program is part of FAAsafety.gov. It's the Safety Program Airman Notification System. We're getting away from the old postcards of when the safety seminar or the WINGS program is going to be offered in your area. You register on FAAsafety.gov. You, you indicate which uh, areas of aviation you're interested in, and then you get a notification via email of upcoming events. Uh, and, and you can select the parameters, by the way. You know, I'd like to know about all of the uh, upcoming events within 50 miles of me or within 100 miles of me or all events that are specific to flight instructors and flight instruction. You can set all these parameters in there. It's a very useful tool and, and a, a, a neat system. And maybe you were part of the safety program before as an aviation safety counselor. Uh, now uh, it's the FAST team and it's a new program so you need to re-register to be part of that and you do that on FAAsafety.gov. If you like to do uh, WINGS programs, safety seminars, be part of promoting safety with the general public, it's a good thing to do. And we do encourage all of our master instructors to be part of the FAST program. And of course IACRA, which makes some people kind of shudder, but <laughs> there's been some problems with the website recently, I understand, as recent as last week, there were some major problems, but IACRA is being used for uh, 8710s now, so you fill one out, uh, you, the student <coughs> fills one out and takes it to the DP, and uh, you know, you, you need to fit, do it all online so there's no more paperwork and no more putting it in the mail and things being lost and yeah. time being taken by going through the system. Some tools that are available to help you be a better flight instructor through NAFI. Master Instructor Accreditation, which we'll discuss in a minute. We've got a couple of websites. The NAFI website itself, nafinet.org. And then there is a website specific to Master Instructors uh, that contains all the Master Instructor information and application stuff and pictures of hundreds of Master Instructors. Um, couple of publications. Mentor Magazine, a monthly magazine that is written by flight instructors for flight instructors and is mailed routinely to all NAFI members. eMentor, it is not an electronic version of Mentor Magazine, but rather because of the, the publication lag in Mentor, and I think it's about three months, there's about a three month lag time in Mentor. eMentor comes out every two weeks and it has stuff that's going on right now that flight instructors need to know about. As a part of your membership in NAFI, you do get a free subscription to Flying Magazine, too. <coughs> Excuse me. Ask the Masters Network on the NAFI website, and that's the, the, the first one, nafinet.org. There is a section that is devoted to, um, well, kind of a mentoring tool Master instructors from all over the, actually all over the world, have listed themselves and their areas of expertise and things that they think they would be willing to mentor others in. So you can go to the Ask the Masters portion of the NAFI website if you've got a question about how to become a DPE or uh, how do I get involved with XYZ, whatever. Uh, go there and, and there's contact information and you know you can contact these folks and they'll be glad to to discuss it with you and mentor you through the process 
Um, seminars and training, uh, you know, here's a good example. We're here at Sun and Fun doing this seminar um, as NAFI representatives, and we do this kind of thing all over the United States. So take advantage of those opportunities as they come along. There is also an insurance program available through NAFI and a lot of professional discounts. Um, I'm not looking to plug anybody in particular, but one that comes to mind immediately. As a NAFI member, you get a 40% discount on all of the Glime products. 40%. So what a lot of CFIs are doing, they're buying training material through Glime, getting the 40% discount, and then selling it at retail or nearly so to their students. And it's just a, another source. It's not a lot of income, but it's another source of income for, for the flight instructor. So that kind of thing is available for you as well. That's the NAFI website, the, the home page for the NAFI website. That's the master instructor website. And you will see in the uh, upper left-hand corner there where you're supposed to put in a username and a password. You don't have to. That's just there to scare people. Okay. You don't have to put anything in there. You can get into the website and uh, you know, look at all of the information about the Master Instructor Program. And also there on the left-hand side, you see a picture of two people standing by an airplane in Longmont, Colorado <laughs> on a clear, cloudless day with the mountains in the background. Uh, that's Sandy and Joanne Hill. There's a little 37-second video of uh, us talking about the Master Instructor Program that you're sure welcome to listen to and look at. NAFI recognition. All right. Part of being a professional, we should recognize people for their achievements and for their professionalism. So uh, about oh, 11 years ago now, we opened or we introduced the Master Instructor Accreditation Program to recognize uh, CFIs who are meeting higher professional standards. And we'll get back to that in a minute. We also have the National CFI Hall of Fame. It's housed in Oshkosh, Wisconsin. And we also participate big time in the General Aviation Awards pro program, which includes the CFI of the year. Yeah. OK, let's look at uh, master instructor issues in detail. It is a professional accreditation. It's renewable. It is, it's uh, issued for two years. And it's renewable just as your flight instructor certificate is. Every two years, you have to go through the process again so that we can uh, attest to the fact that you are meeting these same professional standards. And um, the FAA, as well as industry, has really bought into the program. The program itself, or the, the accreditation itself, sets some professional standards. It recognizes aviation educators who really do go above and beyond the, the call. They are they're not just the average run-of-the-mill flight instructor that you might find hanging around at the local airport. These people truly have some things to offer as aviation educators. There are a few perks, there are a lot of perks, but uh, a few that, that are significant. One of the things you can do when you earn the designation is uh, that will renew your flight instructor certificate by earning the, the designation. We can also give you a new flight instructor certificate valid for 24 calendar months. Now, going back to the gold seal discussion that we had a little while ago, this is a relatively new development in the program. Those people who do not have a gold seal, but who hold either an advanced or an instrument ground instructor rating, and are a current master CFI, that now gets you a gold seal. So that's the only other way you can get a gold seal is by becoming a master CFI. Uh, and that's, that's significant because so many people anymore are specializing in areas of aviation education where they're out of the market for Gold Seal. They just can't get it. And then you can also use the designation to renew your position as a Part 141 Chief Flight Instructor or Assistant Chief Flight Instructor. Because technically, the Master Instructor Accreditation is a FERC, even though it's unlike any FERC you've ever seen. <laughs> uh, but it would renew your, your um, credentials as a Part 141 Chief or Assistant Chief. All right, here's a picture of uh, the Meet the Masters Breakfast. We hold one here at Sun and Fun. It'll be tomorrow morning. And another one at Air Adventure every year where we honor the master instructors. They're uh, invited and to bring a guest as well. And we have uh, 
EIA and NAFI and FAA people uh, come to honor the masters, as well as our corporate supporters. Here uh, is a picture of our former FAA administrator, Marion Blakey. She was good enough to come for five continuous years to our breakfast at uh, Air Venture and honor us with, by saying nice things about flight instructors and NAFI masters and, Na and the NAFI programs. Uh, she definitely recognized that without instructors, you know, there is no aviation. Right. She, uh, and some of you may have seen in the things that I write, uh, a quote. She made a, a very profound quote about a year ago. She said, the master instructor is the best the right seat has to offer. She said that. And uh, so I, I take full advantage of that, that quote. Okay, we also have the National Flight Instructor Hall of Fame that's held every fall uh, in Oshkosh at, um, at the uh, museum there. And these people are honored every year and uh, their name and their trophy is in the museum if you ever get to go to the museum and look up these people. We recognize CFIs who've made a significant regional, national level contribution to aviation education and flight instruction while reflecting credit upon themselves and their profession. Very noble sounding yeah, words, but, very noble. but these are people, let's see, last year was Hal Shevers. Hal Shevers, and, 40s. And Wolfgang Languishwish. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure I'm saying that right. Languishy, yeah. uh, stick and rudder author. Okay, General Aviation Awards, one of the other things that NAFI is involved in, but to a much greater degree, Sandy and Joanne Hill are involved in, is the General Aviation Awards Program, the National General Aviation Awards Program. Um, I am honored to be sharing the stage today with the National Chairman of the General Aviation Awards Program, Joanne Hill. She is the one who oversees it and makes sure that everything gets done in a timely way and in, a, in an objective way and an accurate way and so forth. The General Aviation Awards Program is sponsored by, well, there are actually 12 organizations listed there. There are now 13 uh, sponsoring organizations, and they contribute operating funds and so forth so that we can make the program work. The program recognizes the CFI of the year, the Aviation Maintenance Technician of the year, the Avionics Technician of the year, and the FAST Team Representative of the year, which until recently was the Aviation Safety Counselor of the Year. So, tell them a little bit about General Aviation Awards. Okay, it is, it is very much a cooperative effort. Uh, without the structure of the FAA uh, FISDO regional office to the national level, uh, we wouldn't be able to accomplish the, this humongous task of gathering nominations from all over the country. So the, the nomination forms are available on FAAsafety.gov as well as on websites of the sponsoring organizations. We've uh, tried to streamline the application and make it not so formidable to some people and, and get good nominations, but they start out at the FISDO level and then with the FAST program managers, the FPMs these days are called, <laughs> and then they move on, those winners move on to the region, so there are eight regions now, uh, and there are regional awardees, and then those regional people move on to the national level, and uh, national winners are selected from a panel from nationwide people. Yeah, so there are a couple of people we would like you to meet. This year's national CFI of the year who, by the way, is here uh, today. The National CFI of the Year is Master CFI and Master Ground Instructor, Max Trescott from California. Uh, this year's National FAST Team Representative of the Year is Master CFI and Master Ground Instructor, John Typen. Little uh, unusual situation here with John. John is not only the 2008 National Fast Team Representative of the Year, he was the 2005 Five. National CFI of the Year. That, that, I don't know <laughs> that that's ever happened before. Um, this year's National Aviation Maintenance Technician of the Year, Mike Bush, also from California, and the National Avionics Technician of the Year, Tim 
Atkinson. Okay, now that we've met those, I would like to introduce you to someone else. Rich, would you join us up here for just a moment on stage? It is my honor and privilege to introduce everyone here to this year's 2008 Southern Region CFI of the Year. Rich was one of the eight regional winners this year. So congratulations, you did a wonderful job. We're, we're proud to have you here. I, I would like to add something before Rich speaks. Uh, I think he is a prime example of what we've been trying to describe to all of you today. He is a professional CFI, he's a master CFI with NAFI, and he, he fits all the requirements of a true professional CFI of the 21st century. <laughs> right, thank you very much. Right. Appreciate it. All I want to say is that on behalf of uh, Sandy and uh, Joanne and of course NAFI and the uh, General Aviation Awards Program, I just want to thank everyone for the recognition and I look forward to continue contributing safety to, uh, to pilots that I work with in the future. Well, thank you very much for your words, Rich. Tell them where you are, where you work yeah, and what you them, do. Yeah, tell them briefly uh, where yes, you are. Yes, I'm a, uh, the academic director for uh, Flight Safety uh, Academy in Vero Beach, Florida. Um, I'm actively instructing CFIs at the academy and also uh, besides running the academic department, I also contribute to ground school instruction in the uh, CFI and the CFII uh, ground schools at the school. Been there just over three years now. Yep. Great. Well, again, thank you very much. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you we'll see much. you tomorrow at the Meet the Masters Press. Okay. That was a little kind of impromptu thing. <laughs> um, okay, we want to uh, end this, and I'm not talking about stopping right now, but we, we have a kind of a cute little quiz. You can't do a a thing like this without having some sort of a test or a <laughs> quiz or whatever. Yeah, heck, we're teachers, yeah, remember? Yeah, we're teachers, right, yeah, we're, we're all teachers. So you have to have to test um, the, the knowledge of your, in this case, our audience. So let's just have a little bit of fun with some of these questions here. They are all relevant, and by the way, every one of them is off of the CFI knowledge test. But let, let's just have a little fun. As a CFI, what records are you required to keep? Anybody know one? What record? Yes, sir. All airmen that you sign off the rating for participation. Okay. A, a log of all flight training and ground training. The name and the date for students you sign off for solo, very important. The name and date of students endorsed for knowledge or practical tests, which is kind of what Rich <laughs> said. And then you also have to put down whether they passed or failed. And you have to keep those, uh, I think that's the next, yeah. How long do you have to keep those, those records? Three years? Three years? Everybody, three years? Okay. At least three years, right. <laughs> At least three years is what it says. Uh, is there a limit to the number of hours you can provide flight training in one day? Flight training in one day. Anybody? Eight. Say again? Eight. Okay, Carl says eight. Anybody argue that? Rich? You okay. can tell he teaches CFIs. Right, he teaches CFI. <laughs> well, so and pass that's, the that's exam. essentially what Carl said, right. yes. Right. Right. Eight hours in a 24 hour period. Okay, CFI responsibilities. What is your responsibility regarding permanent mailing address changes? What do you need to do? As a flight instructor, what do you need to do? If your mailing address changes, what do you need to do? Come on. What is that? 30 days. 30 days. Okay, yep. very good. Within 30 days, you have to notify the FAA's Airman Certification Branch. And you can now do that online, which is kind of a handy tool. All right, if your flight instructor certificate was issued today, what is the last day? What is today? Today is April the 10th. April the 10th, okay. 2008. It's my brother's birthday. Yes, it is. All right. Uh, April the 10th, 2008. What is the last day you can exercise the privileges April, of that certificate? April 30, 2009. Very good. No. April 30th, 2009. If your flight instructor certificate was issued today? 10. 10. 
Yep, 2010. Right. Two years. It says on the back of your flight instructor certificate. On a date, when it's issued. Not it's it. No. 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 If it was issued today, yeah. new certificate or a renewed certificate, you have 24 calendar months, and that was the word we were looking for, really. 24 calendar months, which would be the 30th of April. Okay. I, I assume it's the 30, 30 days. 30 days has okay. September, April, June, 30, November. 30th of April, 2010. <laughs> so 24 calendar months. Yep. All right. All right, warning. This is something that we have, uh, when we review master instructor portfolios, we have caught a few people who have uh, had a misunderstanding. You look on the front side of your CFI certificate and it tells you an issue date. So let's say it's issued April 10, 2008. But let's say that you had a flight instructor certificate um, that you got six months ago, but uh, you had a change of address and you wanted to have your new address on that certificate. So you said, I want to have my current and correct address on that CFI certificate, so I'm going to go down and get a new one. All right, so six months ago, which would have been uh, October, October, you would have, uh, was your original issue date. Now you get a new one issued April 10th with your new address on it. When is your expiration date? Is it October or is it April? When? October. It's October, and people, especially when we all went to the new fancy dancy Wright Brothers plastic certificates, turned in their old ones to get the new ones, the paper ones to get the plastic ones, and they had an issue date on there, and they only looked at that date, not the one on the back side. Now, the back side is the one when you took your FERC or you did a flight check or you got a new rating or certificate or whatever. That's the date that is primary, of primary importance. Right. So we have found people, heaven forbid, who have been instructing on an expired certificate kit because they were not looking at the date where it says expiration date of, they were looking at issue date on the front. Expiration had, is on the back side. We had a master instructor candidate, an applicant, who did exactly what Joanne just described. He sent in his master instructor portfolio sometime six months or maybe a year before he had uh, made an attempt to get the plastic, the new green plastic flight instructor certificate. He was looking at the issue date on the front of the flight instructor certificate, never turned around and looked at the back side of the flight instructor certificate. When his master instructor portfolio arrived in our office, his CFI had been expired for 11 months. He was the chief flight instructor and owner of a 141 school. He had signed trouble. off 24 <laughs> people in that 11 month period when he was not a flight instructor. You see the problem. Big, big time so trouble. Check the backs of your flight instructor certificates. See if I renew. Uh, ways you can renew. Oh, we don't need to go through that. There's 10 of them. Nine. There, nine yeah, right. I'm sorry. Nine, nine different ways to renew your flight instructor certificate. One of them, as we mentioned earlier, is to earn a master CFI designation. CFI renewal. If your CFI certificate expires, how do you reinstate it? Check ride, right. What's the difference between renew and reinstate? Yeah, right. right. Renewing is what you do when you're not, you don't have an expired flight instructor certificate. Reinstating is what you do when it's expired. And it's kind of like starting from scratch, but you don't have to take the written exam. You only have to go out and fly with a, an examiner or a, an FAA representative. Um, who should obtain a ground instructor rating? Or why? Well, okay, why? Actually, I would rather ask who. Everybody, every flight instructor should have at least one ground instructor rating. Either the instrument or the advanced. I wouldn't worry about the basic, but either the instrument or the advanced. There are a lot of good legal reasons, advantages for, for doing that. Uh, what good. are the three ground instructor uh, certificates. Basic, advanced, and instrument. Right. Okay, let's, uh, that's our contact information there. Sandy and Joanne Hill, we 
live and work in Longmont, Colorado, we can be contacted at that phone number or uh, the email addresses that you see up there. We would welcome communication from you about any of the things that we do. We are particularly committed right now to the General Aviation Awards program because it's that time of the year and <laughs> we're, we're trying to get all of that set up for AeroVenture. And I want everyone to remember, don't forget, next Wednesday, don't forget this, take your kid to work day. <laughs> and thank you very much for coming today. We appreciate your time and your attention. Thanks a lot. If, if you, I was going to say, if anyone has questions, we, we can hang around here for yeah, we will. several minutes. Yeah, around. we will. And any of you out there who know a flight instructor, a fast team rep, somebody who deserves recognition, now's the time to ramp up. It yeah. takes time to do a good package. Mm -hmm. It takes time to realize what goes into it. So come on up. Join Sandy up, and folks. Joanne. Yeah. I'd love to have you <laughs> yeah. ask questions. You did a good job. Oh, thank, yeah. you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. thank you for your help. Yes, thanks. Hey. I'm going to hold the yeah. master. Hi. Hi.